Hey guys, the name is Chris Barocci, welcome to Guitar Tweaks. This is the third episode of my Harley Benton Fusion 2 Silver Sparkle Modifying Series. If you missed the first two episodes, you'll find links in the description box, go check it out. You'll also find uh, timestamps, gear links, additional infos in there. So uh, yeah, make sure to check it out. In the last episode, I figured out that the rechargeable battery doesn't fit in the electronic cavity, which is uh, very unfortunate. <laughs> So I decided I will carve out some wood inside to make it fit. And one more thing about this rechargeable battery subject. Uh, I've seen all the comments under the second episode and uh, thanks for all the suggestions. It's so cool to have all these um, people who pay attention and know their stuff. So many of you suggested to use the rechargeable battery option that is basically the backplate for the tremolo springs. That's a really cool option and if you have a strat that's gonna work of course perfectly. Um, this is not a fender though so uh, the screw holes are in a different spot. I didn't want to uh, you know drill new holes and everything and um, to be honest I'm also not a big fan of uh, sort of a thick um, tremolo spring cover because I removed those covers anyhow on all my guitars because I just I love to have the instant option of uh, you know, changing anything on the tram if I want to, so uh, that's not something I want to use, especially not if it's like quite a bit thicker. So I still want to keep it clean and I want to put the rechargeable battery in the electronic cavity. That's why I'm doing this uh, whole thing. There were also some options you guys uh, sort of suggested uh, to route a new hole like a brand new hole just for the rechargeable battery. That's again something I would not want to do because if at any point I want to go back to passive pickups, I don't want to have an empty hole, a cavity somewhere on the, on the body. So um, yeah, that's the reason for that. And also someone told like if I don't use the tram at all, I could block it and use the space where the strings would be to put the battery in there, which would be the best option I think because I really do not use the tram a lot but I don't want to lose that option. I want to be able to use it if I want to or if I need to. I'll just stick to my plan. I don't mind modifying the inside of the cavity uh, because you can cover it up and uh, no one sees it. As you can see, I have my Dremel right here on the wall. It's hanging down and uh, this is some sort of an extension that is way more um, handy basically it's nicer to use and hold it in your hands if you want to go inside the cavity which is very very nice to have and I also have three different bits one is a proper router bit which uh, is something I've been using earlier I also use this um, on my Squire base in case you remember that series uh, what was it like almost two years ago now and uh, these two are more like uh, to engrave or like carve out some wood. These are way more subtle. You can sort of be more careful with these and I'm guessing these are gonna be the ones I'm gonna be using inside the cavity when I don't have to take away a lot of wood but I wanna be more precise. Oh and of course protect your eyes uh, and your hands of course I'll grab some heavy duty gloves or something. Uh, routing can be really wild sometimes. Wood chips just fly all over the place so uh, yeah. Now before I go any further than that, I want to drill the holes for the pots wider because these are US pots that come with these uh, Fishmans and the guitar has a, a metric 8mm hole for every pot. Now before I start using any sort of a, an actual drill bit, I will use a countersink bit which um, is way more 
careful basically and what I want to do is basically scratch away all the finish here around the hole to avoid crazy crackles happening due to all the, um, the pressure and all the wild um, carving of the drill bit. Okay, now we can swap to uh, a proper drill bit. See if that's enough. Oh, please tell me it's enough. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's really cool, man. Oh, wow. Now I really want to tidy up the uh, the routing because I try to be careful, but still, it's pretty rough. So um, I'll do that, and then I'll probably just paint it black <laughs> to match the rest of the cavity better, and then I'm done. Then I can put in the electronics. For that, I will try one of these guys, uh, which is, um, again, a Dremel bit. It's like a, a sanding paper, basically. So uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. Is it ridiculous if I spend more time with tidying up after the routing than with the routing itself? <laughs> I hope not. Even though no one will ever see this because it's gonna be black and uh, it's gonna be under the battery, inside the cavity, which is closed. I just couldn't sleep well. So um, yeah, now it's way better. It still looks very DIY, but I knew that and I was, uh, I'm totally cool with it. I was expecting that, but it doesn't look like being butchered or something. There's no space, how should I get in there? Oh, and by the way, I don't really worry about this paint just being some paint uh, because normally this black paint in electronic cavities is uh, a shielding paint or color. The nature of active electronics is to be way more resistant to all of these disturbances and all these electronic noises and everything and buzz and everything. So I don't really worry about this being just a simple black paint. Let's max the body. I let it dry for a few minutes and then I just uh, rub it off and sort of polish it with, uh, with a piece of fabric. It 
that feels and looks absolutely stunning. You feel the wood, you feel the grain and it's not sticky, it doesn't feel dry at all. I have like five, four or five layers of oil um, on it and then um, I waxed it at the end. So that's, that's done. Let's get back to the electronic cavity. <laughs> Just when I thought, all right, I'm almost there. I realized, no, I'm not at all there <laughs> yet. Um, I have space for the rechargeable battery, for the Fishman rechargeable battery, which is fantastic. Uh, but this space is just too big because I have to put it in there and then turn it like 90 degrees to sit inside the cavity. Like I have to put, put it in like this, I hope you can see it. Then sort of twist it and then now it's in its position. I have space for the pots and for the switch, all good. But right now it just, rattles all over the place. So what I need to do is take care of that um, flying around, that rattling. You could of course just tape this thing directly to the wood, but since it's not super flat, I don't really want to test if this works. And um, as told, I just feel more confident if I know that there's some actual physical connection between the cavity, the inside of the cavity and the rechargeable battery. It just makes more sense to me. Um, and I was trying to figure out something. What should I do with it? What should I do with it? So I was like, come on, wait a second. I have this guy, which is uh, this uh, pickup foam, basically. This is what you'll see in basses, like jazz bass, etc. Um, everywhere where you want to uh, mount the pickup directly on the body. Huh. that's in there <laughs> for good. <laughs> that's not gonna rattle. Then I also have a hole in the middle. Can you see it from all the sparkle? Maybe like this. Uh, let me check the reflections. Yeah, I think you should be able to see it. Right here in the middle, I had a, um, a mini toggle, which obviously doesn't have any space now because of the rechargeable battery. So I have to do something about it. I could just leave it open but uh, I know myself, I would hate the fact that it's just an empty hole. I found this in the barn. Um, this is, uh, <laughs> this was in the ground. <laughs> this was for a plant to sort of help it to grow. Not sure what kind of plant it was, but um, I just looked at it and I was like, wait a second, this looks to be the right size, the right radius. And uh, it is, <laughs> it's perfectly fitting into the hole. It's like super tight, but I can stick it in. It doesn't rattle. It's the perfect <laughs> radius. And I was like, okay, well, that's a sign. Let's use it. So I will cut it um, as thick as the, um, the thickness of the body is at this point, which is gonna be, I'm guessing like four, maybe five millimeters, something like that, which is pretty thin. Something like this, yeah. Uh, but before I cut it off, I will um, sand it real flat, real smooth, and finish it with a silver sort of chrome spray. Well, that's its name, so it's not sort of, it is a chrome spray, which you can apply on wood and metal and plastic and whatever. I never used it. I don't know if it works, but it wasn't cheap, and I hope it does work. <laughs> we'll see. So um, I will put that chrome finish on the top and then sort of push it in the hole. This is not a big electronic cavity. So uh, I think it's gonna be a real pain in the butt to work inside this cavity, especially because I have these tiny little logs here and that's not a lot of fun to wire, especially if you have n literally no space to do it. So what I will do is uh, this, I draw, which, which way? This way, yeah. I draw the cavity here in this piece of paper. I will cut this out, put it on a piece of um, old pig guard, like a leftover, and uh, drill all the holes 
and mount all the parts on it, like the two parts, the, uh, the switch obviously, and I will keep it close to the actual cavity. I'll put it on top probably. And if that's not enough, <laughs> there's always one more thing to do. That's the cavity cover. And this is the charging port for these uh, uh, rechargeable thingies from uh, Fishman. And this has this uh, little adhesive uh, tape on top. And uh, I will have to drill a hole through this guy and put this on the bottom. Let's figure out the position of the USB charging port. I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere over here. A little higher. Yeah, so I was just eyeballing this, but <laughs> to be honest, I have some space here to move around. I um, I made it big enough to have like a few millimeters in all directions uh, in case my uh, my hole is not going to be exactly on the right sp right spot. So. Uh, but that's that's gonna be cool. I think I can allow myself to have the luxury of eyeballing things. <laughs> Oh, this actually looks pretty good. It's still dusty, but I really love this brushed look, so I don't even think I will go further than this. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope that the angle is good. I mean, now it's too late. It's on there. Ha 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 ha, look at this. Nice. Unbelievable. Next step, which is gonna be wiring the electronics, putting in the pickups, and obviously playing that thing. I just can't wait until I'm there, but all of that will happen in the next episode. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know you were expecting this to be the last episode where you actually see and hear the, the guitar, the end result. Um, yeah, what can I say? It just takes a lot of time, obviously. One or two more weeks until the the guitar is done and you get to hear it and see it. Um, yeah, I thought I will not want to make you wait any longer until I'm completely done with the instrument. Um, at least you have something to watch and maybe enjoy in the meantime. And uh, this gives me a couple of more days to wire everything and finish up the guitar and play it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the fourth part, which is coming up very, very soon. You guys take it easy. Uh, let me know what you think about the project so far in the comment section. Meet you down there. And um, I'll be back. I'll be back next week. Bye-bye.